Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AEC Technical Specialist with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about the Scale tool. We can find the Scale tool by going to our Home tab and going to our Modify panel, and here it is. When we use it, we can essentially select our objects and there are no other options in our command line. So let's start with this line right down here. We'll select the object and then we can press Enter. And now it's asking us to specify a base point. So we can choose any part of the line and that base point determines how the line will increase or decrease its size based on our scale. For example, if I start on the right side of this line, now the point that I've started at, the base point, will never move or change, but the line itself will increase or decrease in size based on my scale factor. Now I can type in my scale factor. For example, if I want the line to be exactly twice as large as it is or twice as long as it is, I can just type the number two and then press enter. Now the line is twice as long and let's do the opposite. So I'm just gonna press the undo key. And actually let's redo that because we'll be able to see it a little bit better if we do it this way. What I'm gonna do now is, is I'm gonna select the line, use the scale tool, so I selected the line first and then used the scale tool. So you can do it in the opposite way if you want. Then I'll specify my base point. And now I'm going to make the line smaller. So all I have to do is type a number that's smaller than the number one. For example, if I want to make it exactly a fourth of its original size, I can type in either one quarter of an inch or 0.25 and then press enter. And now the line is exactly a fourth of its original size. Let's use the scale tool again, and this time we're going to select multiple lines. We can essentially select as many objects as we'd like, then press the enter key. And when we scale them, we have the choice of our base point. If I was to choose the corner, for example, then as we scale up manually, we can see that the actual square will get bigger, but the original corner will not move. We could also use the scale tool one more time, select our objects quickly by using the window selection or crossing selection then press enter, and then we can place our mouse right here in the center point of the square. And as we can see, now the entire thing will grow based on that base point. So the base point is the base and will never move no matter what, but lines and other objects will move from that base point. So I can essentially increase the bottom line based on the center of that point. So if I wanna make this three times bigger than it was, I can just type the number three and then press enter. And now we've essentially used the scale tool to increase the size of all of these lines at the same time. We can also use the scale tool with polylines. For example, this is a polyline. So if I use the scale tool, I can specify any base point. I'll use the center of this polyline as a good example. And now I can increase its size from that base point and the entire polyline can get modified. This time, let's make it a bit smaller. We're going to make it about three quarters of its original size. So 0.75 and then enter. And there it is. We just made that square just a little bit smaller. Let's select this circle and use the scale tool. Of course, we could use any of the quadrants of the circle in order to increase its size. We can also use its center point just like we did for the polyline and increase its size that way. Now what we can do is, is we can look at more of the settings and little features that are in the scale tool. We can see them after we use most of the initial functions of the tool. So let's use scale and let's take this rectangle and I'll show you what I mean. So I am now going to use the base point. We're gonna use this corner this time. And now we have two options in our command line. We have the copy option or reference. Let's use copy first. With copy, we can just press the C key and then enter. And now we're not going to delete the original object. We're going to essentially make a copy of that object and scale it up or down, for example. So I can make this object, let's say two and a half times its original size. We'll then press enter. And there it is. And the original object is still intact. Before we use the scale tool again, I'm going to take this rectangle and copy it. And I'm going to move it on top of this line. This will allow us to demonstrate the reference option with the scale tool. Now we can use the scale tool, select our rectangle, and we're going to use this as our base point. Before we continue, we can now type R to choose reference. Now scaling with a reference is extremely powerful and it allows us to specify an exact length or width of any desired side. For example, if I want the entire side 
of this square to be five units, then I can use the reference points essentially from the base itself and then go to this point here. I could even use this point here and move to that point, for example. So let's click on this one and then we'll click on this one right here. And now I could manually scale this up, but I can just type in any units if I want. So I'm going to type in five and then press enter. And you would think that this would increase the size of the square by five times, but no, actually we're specifying the new length of that reference, which is essentially the side of the square. And so now our square got smaller. And if we were to zoom in and measure this, we'll see that it is exactly five units. So that's one way that we can use the scale with a reference. Let's use the scale tool one last time and we'll use it based off of reference, but there's one more way that we can use it. I'm gonna specify this base point again. I'll type R for reference. Then I'm gonna use the same distance that I used before, which is essentially one of the sides of this square. So I'll go from here to there. And before typing in any number or manually inputting a reference, I can essentially use the points command. Now, I don't need the points demand to accomplish what I'm about to do, which is to make this square the same length as this line down here. So I could click on the end point of the line and we'd be done. But instead, if I wanted to, I could use points. And this is very useful if there's an object that this object is not next to. So let's try that right now. For example, I want this square to essentially be the same size as this square right here. So I'm going to specify my first point from here and the second one will be here and there it is. We now have the exact same length for both squares. I'm going to move them next to each other to confirm this and there we go. These two squares are essentially the same because we used the scale with reference and then we used points to specify that. If the square was next to this square, so for example, if we had this square right next to it like this, then I wouldn't need points. I could just literally click after using reference on this point and then just click right here at the end and it would make them the same size. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on the scale tool in AutoCAD. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.